Hi. We have a house in the countryside that gets cold in winter. Being tired of burning wood, a few years ago we installed a central heating system that gulps diesel like it was a cargo ship. It works well, but the only problem is that uh, because the house is very old, it has an extremely low energy efficiency, so it takes a long time to heat up. Until now, we have relied on our good neighbor to turn on the heating a few hours before we come, but of course you'll agree that this is not a good long-term solution. So I was looking forward to do something about that. I guess there are some already existing commercial solutions for this very problem, but where would be the fun in that? So that is the boiler room, and currently we have these four switches for ground floor, first floor, second and third floor, and hot water. I'm going to substitute that with the, with the system. First thing I have to do is to make a plug here to plug uh, my system. I'm going to take uh, electricity from that box. As you can see, the electrical installation of that house uh, complies with all the European regulations. I was going to use Arduino Nano for this project, but then I found out about this chip an ESP32, which is better than the Arduino in every single way, and it's even cheaper depending on where you buy it, so I'm never going back. That's the first version I made. As you can see, it's just a simple board with four relays that are being operated with transistors, there are flyback diodes and the connectors for the boiler and the buttons. Sadly, this first version didn't work. I was able to turn on the heating su successfully, but when turning it off, it would stop working, it would stop responding, the device was not able to reboot itself, and the only way to make it work again was a hard reset, unplug, unplug again. The problem is that those switches operate electric water bulbs. Electric water bulbs have a solenoid inside. When you unplug a solenoid, there's a sudden change in the magnetic field, which induces a voltage peak in the coil. This voltage peak can create a tiny spark inside the relay, which not only can damage the relay in the long term, but also generates electromagnetic interference. In that case, this electromagnetic interference generated by the tiny spark inside the relay was strong enough to put the microcontroller in a very undefined state. So, in its essence, the device was designed to switch a resistive load and not an inductive one. This distinction becomes very important in that case, as it is the difference between working and not working. I then made a second and final version. In that case, I ditched the relay and I used a triac to do the switching which is operated with an optocoupled track driver circuit. I also added a snuffle circuit in parallel with the output in order to help prevent the problem that I had before with the first version. I then laid out the board and I sent it to manufacturing. That's the board as it arrived and I can start soldering the components. I had never seen white integrated circuits before, but I think they look amazing. I then proceeded to make the front panel with four buttons to turn the heating on and off and four LEDs to read the switch's status. It's now installation time and the first thing I have to do is to put a plug for the device. Next step was to remove the existing switches. The box was so tightly screwed to the wall that I had to rely on an orthodox method to take it off. Even my good old trusty torch. I then installed the new box to house my device and I started plugging the cables to the board. I wrapped the board with toilet paper in order to help prevent any short circuit that might occur. And what about security? 
Well, IoT devices are not well known for their security, and this one is probably not an exception. I address the device directly through an open port in my router, which is only protected with HTTP basic authentication. Given that the ESP can only process one request at a time, and that the throughput is very low, I don't think a brute force attack is possible. However, one kind of attack that this device is very vulnerable to is a denial of service attack. Because the amount of requests per second it can process is very low, you just need to know my IP, you can scan the ports, you can know which port the application is connected to, and you can flood it with requests, and it will very easily collapse. So, in conclusion, if that was a production device, I probably would have given it more thought and to make it more, to make it more secure. But given what it is, I think it's good enough for now. Life is short, at some point you have to call it a day and move on. And that's what I'm, what I'm going to do here. And here you can see the final result. As you can see, I'm able to turn the heating on and off from the internet with quite a low latency. So it's great. If you were wondering what I'm using to address the device, well, I've got a Lambda function in AWS. This, uh, the device calls the Lambda once every hour in order to update its public IP. The public IP gets saved into a DynamoDB table. And then this uh, very uh, Lambda function acts as a proxy for me to connect to the device using the public IP that I've saved. So that was it. That's been uh, quite a simple project, but that will result in a real quality of life improvement for all of us. And I hope you enjoyed it.